Good evening, One Temple Fitness family. Thank you so much for joining us for February's Temple Talk Steps to Self-Discovery. As a reminder, please mute your phones and your computers, and we will have our discussion and reflection time after the presentation. Today, we will talk about what is One Temple Fitness. We'll have our reflection questions. And then today's Temple Talk will be guided by Erin, and she's going to touch on building your foundation, steps to self-discovery, self-love. I'll talk about food and mood. We'll highlight the recipe of the month and have our closing. So before we get into our reflection questions, what is One Temple Fitness? One Temple Fitness focuses on stimulating the mind, stretching the spirit, and strengthening the body. And we do that through our Temple Talks, our monthly Temple Talks, as well as our free monthly group workouts. And we have one tomorrow at Walker Temple Fit, um, Church, Amy Church in Los Angeles. So some of our reflection questions. Do you know who you are? What are your talents, gifts, and passions? Do you know what God has called you to do? What vision has he put inside of you? What is your purpose in this world? And as a reminder, we do have our tip sheet on our website, www.the7fire, F-I-R-E, the number 8.com. And it's under our temple um, talk or One Temple Fitness worksheets. So please download the worksheet so you can answer these questions as you reflect and as we go throughout the presentation. And um, as I mentioned before, we are based off of um, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through 17. Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For God's temple is sacred and you together are that temple. And Aaron's going to really emphasize what is that temple? And how do you know um, how to keep your temple whole and not destroy it? And so again, hopefully your mind will be stimulated tonight. Hopefully tomorrow you'll join us to strengthen your body. And through reflection, solitude, and meditation, your spirit will be stretched. Okay, so as we begin today's talk, I really want us to use this, the kid's story of the three little pigs, okay? So in case you haven't read this story, uh, I'll give you a little summary. It's about three pigs that were given the task of building a home. One pig decided to build their home made out of straw, okay? And they were dancing, they were singing, and it was really easy to make, very quickly made. The other pig decided to make their home out of twigs. A little bit more difficult, still easy, singing and dancing. The third pig decided to make their home out of brick. Took the pig very long to build the home, but finally when it was built, it was the home that ended up lasting. And so we're gonna use this analogy of the three pigs when we're talking about self-discovery and how we need to think of our bodies and ourselves as homes and how we are able to lay strong foundations, okay? So we're gonna talk about five different things for tonight's talk. The first one is having a strong foundation has to be within your relationship with God. How do you interact with your relationship with God? So your number one building block is your relationship with God because God is your guide to how you should navigate your life. Just as a lighthouse brings in ships, boats, home safely, so will God bring you to your final destination. God has given us the amazing gift of free will, but if we're asking him to supply, then we must have faith that he'll provide. Ultimately, God is our provider, protector, healer, and our father. He loves us so much that he's allowed that beautiful gift of free will but his love really ultimately frees us to do things. Uh, it gives us opportunities, brings us into different relationships and environments through his love. 
So the, our reflection for you would be, how do you connect with God, knowing that he's our, ultimately our strongest foundation? So number two, when we're thinking about building our foundation for ourselves, we have to reflect on what are our values, morals, and ethics. And a lot of times these three terms sometimes are used interchangeably. So we're going to kind of explore the different definitions tonight. Values are defined as a person's principles or standards of behavior, one's judgment of what is important in life. While on the other hand, morals are defined as a person's standards of behavior or beliefs concerning what is and what is not acceptable for them to do. So some examples of morals are truth, freedom, charity, etc. And then when they are functioning correctly, they will are protecting our life or enhancing for all. And so thinking about ethics and morals, you really want to think about those as the things that really govern us, right? Govern our behavior and the way that we interact. And so a lot of times we might hear the word ethics, not so much in our personal life, because a lot of times we hear in our personal life that we're guided by our values or our morals. But sometimes in our professional spaces, we hear the word or the term code of ethics, that sometimes it's not the law, but there's these unwritten laws that we're supposed to abide by that allow for us to do no harm and do the right thing. One thing with all of these that was especially highly with ethics, but I think is true for all three, is that all of these are dead without action. We can have values, morals, and ethics, but if we're not really living by them in our daily lives, then what are they really good for? So really reflecting on that. And then your family and your culture. So ultimately, there's a saying that says that you have to know your past in order to move forward. A lot of times, each individual might have that privilege of knowing our, our ancestors or the people that have come before us, and some might not have that wonderful privilege. But when we want to know why we have a certain tendency or this certain characteristic or personality, it does give us peace and understanding, knowing our family structure and where we came from. So really understanding that will allow for us to access different opportunities and people in a certain way. And so really reflecting on your family dynamic, but also the culture that you were brought in, up in, and that will allow for you to determine the direction that you want to go in with your life. So for instance, with my family, my mother's mother, so my grandmother, she was a sharecropper in um, the South, and she didn't actually go to school until she was 12 years old. And I found out that information actually when I was applying to get my master's degree. And that's what I wrote in my personal statement of why I wanted to continue my education is because I had this pride of knowing that people really laid the path before me and they sacrificed. And so that was my motivation to move forward. And it gave me a new sense of pride in my family and who I was. So really reflecting on what's your family dynamic and what's your culture and how it influences who you see yourself as. And then the next one is your goals and aspirations. So your goals and aspirations can really propel you into the direction that you want to go um, go in. So going back to the story of the three pigs, right? We have a house made of straw, we have a house made of twigs, and then we have a home made of bricks. So you really want to think about, do I live in a home of straw that's easily blown over? Is it, am I made of a house made of twigs that's a little bit sturdy, but if someone really blows hard enough on it that I can fall over? Or I'm in a home that's made of brick where it's stronger and it lasts and it has uh, a layer of foundation. So thinking about your goals, do you have small goals that are easily blown over or do you have a big vision for your life in the, in the way that you want to interact day to day? So thinking about the home in which you live in or your building, you really want to think about that your home is driven by your goals that you set for yourself. And then lastly, your environment. Your environment ultimately determines how you approach and view things. And so whether you're building a home on a hill that's unsturdy, whether you're building your home in a space that's negative and always willing to tear you down, or you're uh, building your, your home in an environment that allows for you to thrive and prosper and be happy, you really wanna think about who 
you're surrounding yourself in and is that environment helping you grow or is that environment keeping you in a place that's easily um, influenced or could easily be destroyed so thinking back to the story of the three pigs you know do you want to be living in a home made of brick or do you want to be living in a home made of straw that can easily be blown over so these are the five things that you can think about that will allow for you to reflect, am I building a strong foundation for myself? Um, and so uh, when I was looking up the three pig story, the quote that I really liked goes like this, I build my house of stone, I build my house of bricks, I have no choice to sing and dance because work and play don't mix. I really love that because the pig that put the work in had the house that didn't get blown over by the bad wolf. So really think about that. So here are some reflection questions for you. What do you build your foundation on? Who do you build your foundation with? How do you build your foundation? Are you going to be the pig that just wanted to sing and dance, get, get in and out of the work? Or are you the pig that took their time and laid brick by brick? Who do you invite into your home once it's done, right? That's a very important thing to think about because ultimately how, I remember my friend saying like, people will treat you the way that you allow for them to, for them to treat you. So if you only view yourself as a home made of straw, people will treat you like a home made of straw versus if you see yourself with being made out of brick, the, tear, the, you know, the tears and sweat that you put into building that home, they'll treat you accordingly. So just think about that. Um, and then lastly, how do you want your house to be remembered by? Do you want to be known as the home that lasted, that was able to bring generations of people through? Or do you want to be known as the house that's easily blown over and is not lasting at all? So here are some steps that you can actually take in your day-to-day -day lives that will help you discover who you really are and who God wants you to be. So the first step is be in constant reflection. Um, reflection is such a key piece to growing. And so self-discovery is not a destination, it's a journey. And so it's really important that throughout that journey that you're taking pit stops to say, okay, where did I just come from? What did I learn? What are the things I still need to do to press forward? Who is around me on this journey? Are they beneficial to me? So reflection allows for you to sit and think about, am I doing the things that I know I should be doing to meet my final destination? Um, so reflection is key. Uh, number two, ask God to show you the areas you need to change. This is something that I always kind of, in my morning prayer, I say, God, um, please forgive me for my sins, but also allow for me to be the woman that you called me to be and, 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 and show me signs and like, let me press into that. So we know that we're imperfect beings and we need God um, to help us be that person. So I always ask, like, show me the areas, whether that's stubbornness, whether that's being sharp tongue, whether that's being lazy or whether that's being judgmental, whatever it might be that you know that that's the area that's kind of hindering you from going to the next level. You have to ask God, show me this area and allow for me to start working on myself into change. Um, the next step is be selective of your village. And this one can be a tough one to think about to do, to, to understand fully. Um, and it's, it's so true because, I mean, I always say if there's a saying out there that's been around for ages, if your great, great grandparents have been saying things that are similar to this generation has been saying, there's gotta be a level of truth to it. And there's always that saying of the apple don't fall that far from the tree. Um, uh, birds of a feather flock together. Um, there's probably tons more, but it's so important for you to really think about is your environment influencing you to grow or is your environment influencing you to stay the same or is your environment taking you 10 steps back? So you really have to think about it. Now, with reflecting on this, we're not necessarily saying to cut people off completely, but to think about 
in a way, how are you investing in their lives and how are they investing in your lives? But also you want to think about your own capacity or for discipline. So if you're going into an environment, where you know that they might influence you in a negative way. Can you still stay true to who you are and your values and the things that you have for your life without being influenced or persuaded by that environment or by people or, or that situation? So if you feel like you have that strength and that capacity, then go ahead and, and, and keep those individuals there. And just also set healthy boundaries and expectations for yourself because we can't change anybody. And we especially can't change anybody who doesn't want to change. So, but we can control ourselves. So that's always in our realm of control. So just really thinking about that self. So sometimes in our lives, putting people in certain lanes or boxes is the best thing to do if you don't want to cut them off, but if you know that that person might be good for that particular situation and you only hang out or, and, you know, do certain things, then that's your prerogative. But just know that ultimately your village influences you. So just reflect on that. Um, the next one is be fearless. All of this <laughs> requires you to be fearless and be open to change and to maybe sometimes leave old habits or old ways or, people behind. And so it can be a scary process and it could be a process that takes a long time. And so you have to kind of just be courageous throughout the whole process and trust that it's going to, you know, come through in your benefit for your benefit. So be fearless, be courageous. And if you have that right village and you have God by your side and you're constantly reflecting, it won't be that scary along the way. So just keep that in mind. And then lastly, don't look back, keep your eyes on God and keep pressing forward. Um, if you know that you have made so many strides forward, you want to make sure that you don't allow for any temptations or situations to get you back to old ways. And it's so, it's so easy. It's so easy to do. And there's certain people in our lives to just, we just allow to do it. Um, they just know how to, Get through that back door. You're like, oh, how did you get here? Oh, I opened that. I left that back door open. Dang it. Um, so you really want to make sure that you always are keeping your eyes on the prize, which is ultimately God and ultimately those big vision goals that you have for yourself. And you really have to evaluate, is this going to help me get there? Or is this a person in a different mask that ultimately is like keeping me back? Yeah, it's going to keep me back. So you have to start thinking about that, but ultimately always keep your eyes forward. So with discovering who you are, remember this is a process. Every single day there should be something new that you are learning about yourself or rediscovering about yourself. And with that, one of the things that you ultimately want is that you want to love yourself. The more that you know yourself, the more you're able to love yourself. And so just keep that in mind that when you love yourself, others can love you um, at the same capacity and hopefully more, but they will love you to the level that you love yourself. So um, these are some quotes that I found that kind of speak to that. So you yourself deserve your love and affection as much as anybody in the entire universe. So always remember to be kind to yourself, be empathetic. Everything that you do for others, do that to yourself first. Um, Self-love is an ocean and your heart is a vessel. Make it full and any excess will spill over into the lives of the people you hold dear. But you must come first. Um, and then it is not what you are that holds you back. It is what you think you are not, right? So keeping that in mind, the more that you press forward and invest in discovering who you are and who God calls you to be, you will discover this amazing space of self-love. And self-love, once again, is a practice. <laughs> uh, and you really have to remind yourself to, to pour into your own abilities, talents, um, into your own body and temple, which is ultimately what we stand for. All right, great job.
Aaron definitely pointed out some major points and tips on how to continue to love yourself and go higher. So I hope that you will reflect on that, um, particularly using our tip sheet that you can find on our website. Now we're going to go into our food and mood portion, and we're going to talk about what makes you sleepy. So ask yourself, do you often get tired after eating most of your meals? If the answer is yes, first we recommend that you see your physician to rule out diabetes. If you know that you are not at risk for being diabetic, then here may be some other reason. It can be related to eating processed foods that contain high levels of sugar and refined carbohydrates. Eating these types of foods causes a risk a rise in blood sugar levels followed by a drop, which results in low energy levels. Another reason is a metabolic problem. Fatigue is mainly from the hypothalamus, which is an area in the brain where the primary function is to keep our bodies balanced. Metabolism is the process where the energy goes in, so caloric intake, and that energy is utilized by the body. When energy isn't utilized the way it's supposed to, you'll have a metabolic problem. Therefore, remember, the main goal of eating, when you take in calories, it's supposed to be used by your cells and make you feel more energetic, think better, and ultimately have a better mood. Your body needs energy to function, not just to run after your dog or your cat or your child or put time in at the gym, but to breathe and simply exist. We get this energy from our food, which is broken down into fuel or glucose by our digestive system, and then macronutrients provide calories or energy to our bodies. So more than just changing food into energy, our digestive cycle triggers all kinds of responses within our body. Excess secretion of insulin, which is the body's way of trying to balance blood sugar levels, causes tryptophan to move into the brain where it is metabolized into serotonin and melatonin. These neurotransmitters have a calming effect and help regulate sleep. And you can note that in um, the diagram that you see on the screen. However, there is good news. So I want you to take note that turkey and other high protein foods along with spinach, soy, eggs, cheese, tofu, and fish contain the amino acid tryptophan, which is used by the body to create serotonin, possibly responsible for that post-meal haze. Cherries affect melatonin levels. Carbohydrates cause a spike and subsequent fall in blood sugar, and the minerals in bananas relax your muscles. Any one of these factors could leave you sleeping. So to help balance blood sugar and insulin levels, Choose natural foods that are high in fiber and protein, such as whole grains, legumes, and nuts. Secondly, apple cider vinegar helps improve digestion by increasing stomach acid. Drinking a glass of water mixed with one to three teaspoons of apple cider vinegar 15 to 20 minutes before a meal can provide digestion and nutrient assimilation by increasing HC1 production. Additionally, a balanced diet that includes vegetables, whole grains, and healthy fats promotes sustained energy. So drinking plenty of water, avoiding too much sugar, and eating smaller yet more frequent meals can also help. Lastly, we have to strengthen our bodies. So exercise can keep you alert during the day, minimizing the risk of your post-meal slump. Multiple studies found that regular exercise helps increase energy and reduce fatigue. In other words, being sedentary doesn't cut it. It doesn't create some sort of energy reserve that you can just tap into at will. Instead, being active will help ensure that you have the energy to push through your days. So make sure you come be active with us tomorrow at Walker Temple AME Church. 
at 9 a.m. and check out our workout videos on our YouTube channel. Okay, so we usually highlight a recipe of the month and uh, we always encourage you all to try it yourselves. Definitely post it and tag us on our Instagram and Facebook pages. But for this month, I actually made this for Valentine's Day for some of my friends. Um, they're basically, um, the frittatas, but you can basically, I call them little egg muffins. You can call it whatever you want, but it's very easy to make. And it's a great snack in the morning that can just you pick up and go. So all you need are 10 eggs, one and a half cup of pepper jack cheese, um, one avocado, one can of black beans, two tablespoons of minced garlic, and then one half cup of red onion that's obviously cut up. And then what you'll do is you'll heat up the oven to 375, spray your muffin tin with olive oil or coconut spray. And then in a separate bowl, you're going to mix all the ingredient ingredients together. So you're going to crack open the eggs, put them in the bowl, mix in the avocado, make sure that the beans are dry. Um, I use the, the strainer to do it with a can of black beans. Um, and then you can put in your garlic, your onion, and your um, pepper jack cheese. And basically, you're just going to mix that all together. And then uh, I used kind of like that protein scooper, but use some type of measuring cup or something like that will that will help with the transfer of the uh, the liquid ingredients into the, the muffin tin. And so what I would recommend is to make sure not to go all the way up to the line because when it's cooking, what tends to happen, it will overflow and it will be fine. It just won't look pretty when you get it out. Um, and so then you're going to put it in the oven for about 12 or 15 minutes. Just check on it um, often. And I would say just the way that I always check to see if it's ready, I always like to stick like a fork in it. And if you pull it out and there's no ingredients still on there, you know that it's good to come out. And then uh, you just take it out, let it cool for about five minutes. And during that cooling process, I like to add more cheese because <laughs> I like cheese. So it's up to you if you want to do that or not. Um, and you enjoy it. And it makes a lot. I made about like 10 or 12 of them. And then you can eat them every single day after afterwards. So enjoy and tag us if you end up making it. Okay, so... We've come to the end and we just wanted to say thank you so much for participating, whether it was live or watching it on YouTube. Um, and we hope that you've discovered a new way to approach your goals in life. We want to stay connected with you. So please visit our website, which is www.thenumber7fire8.com. We have weekly devotional and empowerment blogs on there. We also have our calendar so you can find out when our next meetup or our group workout will be. And then we have also our merchandise. Our merchandise is pretty dope. We have a fitness towel and a t-shirt. So you can rep that you're all about your fitness goals in your temple. Uh, we also want you to show us some love on, on uh, the social media platforms. So come to our Instagram page at onetemplefitness.fire and then also visit our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash the number seven fire number eight. Once again, we're so appreciative of your support. And if you didn't have a chance, go to our website and make sure to download the worksheet. We have all our previous um, talks on there and worksheets, so you can get caught up if you missed those as well. Tell a friend, and we would love for you to be part of our community, and we're only going higher. Uh, and we'll see you next month. Just stop sharing.